I'm Alex Davis. I'm one of the physician assistants here with Summit Brain Spine and Orthopedics. We've got Dr. Brian Anderson with us, one of our excellent neurosurgeons. We're going to discuss a little bit about our, our grand rounds meeting that we had this morning with the, the interdisciplinary care that we, we get to come together every Tuesday. First, we'll, we'll have some fun, I guess, get to know you a little bit. If you were one of the Marvel Avengers, which one would you be and why? I don't know. Nobody's ever asked me that. <laughs> uh, I guess I would like to say Thor, uh, driven by morals or, you know, the desire to help and serve uh -huh. and make things, you know, help those who can't help themselves or something like that. Uh, so kind of my rural background and stuff, that's kind of been a big theme of my life. I think the importance of uh, being able to help those around you, I guess. And, Probably at least once a month, somebody thinks that I'm Aquaman. Yeah. So, oh, there you go. but that's yeah. a DC. So, uh, yeah. So. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Speaking of the rural thing, what uh, I know you're from Delta. What's your favorite part about your hometown? I think it changes a little bit. When I was younger, I think it was the availability to nature. Just you know, mm -hmm. being uh, farther away from people, uh, you were able to do outdoor things, and so I think that's what I enjoyed the most when I was young. Uh, I think as I've gotten older, it's shifted, and as I spent a lot of time away from there doing my training and everything, I would say now it's probably the people, just the genuineness of the people, and the people that had a big impact on my life and getting me where I am today. And uh, the other would just be the solitude or just the, the ability to kind of get away from uh, what's dominated my life for the last 15, 20 years. Yeah, yeah. and you grew up here, but you for all of your formal medical training have been out of the state of Utah and then practicing for a little while. So tell us a little bit about what, what brought you back here. Yeah. What, what, how's that transition been coming back to Utah? Yeah, it, uh, it, was, it was quite a bit. We were gone for over 15 years, uh, uh, raised most of my kids uh, outside of the state and uh, spent a lot of time in Pennsylvania where I did a lot of my formal neurosurgery training uh, and then was in practice in central Illinois. Uh, and I learned a lot about, I think as you live in other places and you get exposed to more people and just different cultures and ways of life and stuff, I think you learn a lot about them, but I think you learn a lot more about yourself. I was there primarily for the job, but I connected with uh, Summit and everything just kind of seemed to make sense. Uh, give me the ability, the flexibility to do what I'd really like to do within neurosurgery and then also brought me close to my family and some of those other things as you realized time goes by and life does move on, uh, you start to value other things maybe. And so that's probably the transition for me. Yeah. Oh, that's great. We're lucky to have you around. You guys, you're an excellent resource for us and for the community as well. Everything you're talking about is, is great to be able to provide for those here locally now. And one of the topics I think that you uniquely are qualified for that we talked about today was some of the Medicare billing and the few of the, the logistics and the economics of healthcare around here. So. Tell us, we talked a little bit about the Surprise Act, mm -hmm. Surprise Billing, and then um, the Narrow Networks, a few mm -hmm. topics that maybe even as providers we don't know a lot about. Uh, why did you feel that was important to bring that up in that room today? Yeah, I think uh, kind of as I mentioned, I, I feel like as providers, uh, clinicians, uh, anyone who takes care of patients who's responsible for providing a service and billing for it, you need to understand the system. And I think that goes for any clinician uh, that, that, that functions within healthcare. And so, one, it's going to be really hard to advocate for or against something if you don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. And so I think that knowledge is very powerful. I want physicians to be able to participate in those conversations and be involved as much as possible in any situation they can. The other topic that we talked about was the dynamic imaging. And can you just briefly tell us a little bit, what, what would you say, what, how do you describe that? What does that mean? What are, what are dynamic imaging? Yeah, I, I, the, the imaging we have available is amazing. Like the technology is just, it's unreal. The stuff that we get to see on imaging uh, that didn't exist 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 40 years ago, uh, it, makes, it makes us certainly better diagnosticians. It helps us to provide more appropriate care in a more timely fashion, all of these things, and it's great. But just like with any technology, when you become uh, a little bit more dependent on it or reliant on it, sometimes that comes with negative issues as well. And I think 
The one thing you have to remember is that all imaging is a snapshot of time. It's a picture at a particular moment. And so even though the MRI scan might be amazing, if the circumstance isn't so that the MRI is gonna be able to show you the pathology you're looking for, then you may miss something. It may not be there. If it's not there or if you're the patient's positioned in a way that it's not visible, uh, then you're gonna miss it and you're not gonna see it. With advancements in technology, we've gotten more comfortable with the advanced technology uh, and we've maybe undervalued some of the more basic imaging uh, that we do have available, particularly for any joints, anything that moves within the body. If you take a picture of it in one position, uh, it's, that doesn't tell you what it's doing in all of the other positions it can be in. And so by, by getting dynamic imaging, imaging mm -hmm. while you're standing up versus laying down, or bending forward versus bending backwards, any of those things will change the position that the body is in. And sometimes that's a difference that will lead to a very different outcome, a different diagnosis. It'll expose a pathology that you didn't see. Uh, on, on the other study. And so we, we know that operating on a picture is never the, the way to translate to a good outcome. There's a lot more that goes into it. So you need to listen to the patient, uh, you need to uh, do the appropriate imaging, and all of that needs to correlate together to all confirm this is the problem. And if you have that scenario and you do the surgery to address it, the outcomes are almost always exceptional. Yeah, the MRI seems to always be the big ticket. That's what everybody's honed in and focused in on other providers, the patients themselves. The MRI should tell the whole story. Yeah. And it sounds like what you're describing is the scenario of almost not seeing the forest because of the trees. Yeah. You, you almost need to take a step back and just go back to the basics of just a plain film x-ray uh, can tell us a lot of the story. What, what kinds of things do you see specifically uh, on the cases, that, uh, the, the, the things that you're treating, what is it that you're seeing on these dynamic x-rays? I think the big part is listening to the patient. The patient will always tell you what's going on. And so when my suspicion is raised that there's some kind of motion or something happening, uh, these image inf images will help me see that. <clears throat> so oftentimes what you'll see is you'll see a perfectly normal MRI scan, but in an MRI scan, the patient's laying down. And uh, as soon as you stand them up, then all of a sudden we see what's likely going on and what's likely causing problems for us. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Yeah, I appreciate all the reminders. We appreciate all of your expertise and, and things that you bring to the to the table for our group. Our, our clinic and our community is lucky to have you. Um, we know it, it's a great reminder, our tool in medicine as a surgical practice is surgery and it comes with its own inherent risk. So we, we want to be extremely confident that it's the right tool to use and that we're doing what's in the best interest of the patient. And clearly yep. it's, it's nice to see that uh, that you've always got the, the patient's best interest in mind. Thank so you. We appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank okay. you.